Hello sports fan and welcome to the Sports Express. I'm your host Alonzo. Today the topic we're going to be speaking about will be about management and sports contracts. If you take a look a lot of times, um, a lot of fans get angry when you have a lot of players that sit and decide to hold out because they would like more money. If you notice, most of the time, most of the time, it's NFL that has holdouts. You know it's Major League Baseball. There's not, a hold, there's not a lot of holdout. NBA, there's not a lot of holdout. And typically, you don't have a lot of holdout in in, um, not in the National League Hockey. Um, but to take a closer examination of how it works is with the NBA and, and Major League Baseball, the moment that those players sign those contracts, six, seven, eight year deals, whether it's for 100 million plus up to 200 million, those contracts are guaranteed. They are guaranteed for the life of that contract. A lot of people may feel, well, this player ain't worth that. I, no, I've heard individuals say, well, I don't think none of the players should make that kind of money. None of them is worth that. No, yes, they are. And I'll tell you why. It ain't so much that they're worth that much as an individual. But they're worth that much when it comes to the star ability that they're bringing to that franchise in merchandise, in ticket sales, in selling the product on television through media. So yes, when you look at all the money that these players are generating, these star players are generating for that franchise, they're worth that and more. Because you have to take a look at the end of the day what these owners are making. When these owners make hand over fist profit. So, and then you're talking about gate receipts, merchandise, television deals. So, these owners, and then they get a salary cap, okay? They get a salary cap from the league himself. So, they're making more money than you can shake a stick at. You ever notice that whenever NHL, NBA, Major League Baseball, or NFL, that they go on strike? Now, you have a public record of athlete salaries. And the money that they're making and their contracts, but the owners don't have to show you, they don't have to open the books to you. They can claim that they're hurting profit wise, and they don't have to open the books to prove it to you. Oh, or by the time that they do, their accountant has cooked the books to make it look like they have a loss. Okay? But explain this to me. I want somebody to explain to me through. Uh, feedback on Twitter or Facebook or wherever. Explain to me how is it a franchise can tell you that I'm losing money but yet and though every year the value of my company is going up. That ain't how business work. You go out there in regular out there in society with regular businesses where they're losing money so is the value of their company. It's going right down the tank with it. Very rarely you have a company that's losing money but the value of them is continuing to go up. Okay, So you have like prime example the LA Clippers. This Steve Ballman, who's just sitting bought the Clippers for two billion dollars. He just shot that market right up. This is the same team that the former owner Sterling bought for twelve million dollars in the eighties. Twelve million and now he's getting two billion. That shows you the high clip rate of the profitability of these franchises. These companies aren't losing money like they're trying to profess to. What they're doing is they find they get to a point where they don't want to share as much money with these players that they have union wise and they, they feel like okay well I don't want to pay that no more. 
Because now I'm not making, I made last year, I made 30 million in profit. Now next year I want to make 50 or 60. And now because of this contract, it's gonna, I'm only going to make 34, 35. So I don't want to pay that much money out of them. So now I'm going to claim that it's something that we're losing money. And I can't afford these salaries. But yet though these are the same owners that sit down and sign these players to these large contracts. You know why they sign to them? Because most of them sit there and make way more money than what they've signed their player for. As I said before, NFL, those players have to get their money up front in bonuses. That's why you have them players that hold out. Because with running backs, they only have a small window of years because before their knees is taking a beating. So they're trying to get as much money they can because they know, everybody know most NFL players, the likelihood of them staying in the NFL is anywhere between five to seven years. Some of them less than that. So they have to make as much money as they can up front. And if I'm sitting there filling them seats up, then they deserve that money. No different than individuals who sit down and go to work every day. What if you're making $10 an hour and you are having more sales and better production than your counterpart and you find out that they just gave him $17 million. Are you going to be happy about it? No, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy because you feel like, why is this guy making more than me and I'm being just as productive? Or why is this company sitting on low-balling me, but they're, they're sitting there reaping the rewards of my work, but I'm not getting paid for it. So you have to look in the same window that when you're talking about that professional athlete. That he does, he's trying to get, he's trying to maximize his potential financially. And in the NFL, bonuses is your, is your thing. You have a lot of them to sign five and six year deals, and they'll never see the end of that deal in most NFL circles. But if they cut them, at least they got their guaranteed bonus money that they still have to pay them out. Okay? You have a player who will sit down and they know that they're, they know that they're not going to make the end of this contract. They know that next year that this player having this contract is going to put them over the salary cap. And they're going to sit down and sign this player anyway. He don't have any kind of uh, security blanket. He's working year to year, even though he signed a seven-year deal. The only thing he got guaranteed was his signing bonus. And then you have a, they used to have it where the NFL owner would backload these contracts. And what that means is you sign a three-year, $24 million contract for $8 million. But what it is is you're not making $8 million a year. You got to take your, let's say you got $10 million in bonus, okay, which leaves $14 million, okay. So they're going to spread that, 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 20, that $14 million over three years. But it might be where well, you don't got that bonus. Where well, you gonna say you gonna might make three million this year, three million next year, and then eight million the last year. That's backloading because you might not never see that that third year. They cut you and all you got is your bonus. So you never seen the internet contract. So sometimes you see these players, these NFL players that sign these huge deals. It's kind of a, it's a gray area. It's a sleight of hand because it's not really what it looks like. Most of them players never make it to the end of those contracts unless they're like the franchise quarterbacks or something. But most of them other players, they never make it. Most of them, they sign them contracts so they don't get signed by somebody else, which they wind up leaving anyway. So you need to support the NFL players when they're trying to get their agents to get as much as they can because you know what? They deserve it. You, you go back and you take a look and research and see how much money the NFL makes a year, including Roger Goodell. Who sit and made, he works for the owners. He don't work for the players. He works for those owners. And he's on their side. So that's why they have to have their player association. So you have to support these players to get as much money as they can. Because like I said, in the NBA and the NFL, those players' contracts are guaranteed. So they can get injured tomorrow. And, they, and unless they retire, they're going to get every single cent of their money. Because most of them owners, they take out insurance policies anyway. So if anything happens, they are gonna from, they can go with Lords of London and get most of their money back. The NHL finally have a salary cap where they do the same thing. Those players try to get as much money up front. They have max deals now. NBA have max deals, but that's still very high max deal. When you're talking about signing a six-year, $124 million contract, that's a lot of money. But they're playing 82 games a year. Major League Baseball, they're playing 162 games a year. But at the, the end of the day, players' contracts, they deserve what they're getting for market value. Not them so much as individual. 
Because you gotta be, you gotta be, it's gotta be great that you can hit 30% and still make millions of dollars. That means you're going to the play every 10 times you're going to the play, you might get three hits. And you're hitting up on a 300, that means 26% of the time you're successful. And you can make $10 million. That is absolutely great. Okay? But it's market value. It's the value that they bring to that franchise in terms of that turnstile and wins and merchandise sales and the value of that franchise. So in the future, when you're looking at these salaries that these players make, make sure you go and take a real long look at what these players, what they're making and what the franchise is making based on that. Because these, these, the management owners are making a killing financially. In the NHL, in the Major League Baseball, in NBA, in all sports across the, across the board, including the NCAA, that farm system, I like to call. So, a lot of those people who's against those players making that kind of money, get your facts straight. Get your facts straight. Put yourself in their shoes when you're at your job and feel like what your worth is. There's a lot of people who work and feel like they're not getting paid with their work, but there's no union around. Most people who's getting what they're, they should be getting and probably should be getting more than that, Unions are around. Unions are around. Regardless of what your feelings are about unions, good or bad, you can say the same thing about management as well. Only they get to get away with it. With a union, they don't get to get away with it. They have to deal with you in a fair, more far, partial manner. And each one of the professional sport leagues have a union. And they have to have it. Because if not, then what's going to happen is these players going to get lowballed. And they're going to get thrown out in the streets. Are they gonna are they gonna be low ball to the point where they're making pennies on a dollar while this owner is making off making off like a bandit? So I call on action for the sports fans to do your research and get all the facts before you go out there and attack these players and say they're not worth a certain amount of money. Yeah, you might they might have unproductive years and some of them don't deserve some of the contracts that they're getting based on their productivity on the field sometimes. But in terms of market value, they do deserve that. And you should fight for them. I know I will. Now, if you have any questions, or any concerns, or comments, I'm all open for it. Please subscribe and leave comments on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook, on my Twitter. I'm open to it. And I love to answer any question that you might have when it comes to contracts, management, and the fairness that it does for the players in general. For all of us here at the Sports Express, we want to tell you have a great afternoon. Be safe. God bless. And I look forward to talking to you next Thursday at 1 o'clock right here on the Sports Express. Have a good afternoon.